a little bit. Um, so, we are recording? Yes. Excellent. I think that's a great way to start. Hello exactly. out there. Hello. Welcome to the podcast. I'm, I'm here with uh, an amazing professor. <laughs> Thank Just, you. Um, I'm here with an amazing student, <laughs> former student, <laughs> an amazing alum, alumnus. Yes, yes. And I th- Jacob. And we, we uh, so. Is it okay, I call it Professor Adam? You can call me Adam, you can call me Professor, whatever you want. <laughs> no, but just uh, uh, f- an incredible, just an incredible person. I don't know you that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, I always, <laughs> I always get, sus- I almost worry, like, what, what have you heard? Um, <laughs> well, the feeling is mutual, though. It's very so, yeah, yeah. Um, But just so excited to have, have him on the podcast. And um, I'm really excited about what we're going to talk about. Yeah. Um, I just showed him a book yes. that we... We are trying to. Um, I haven't read the book yet, so I'll be honest here. But you know, it's a. I say it's a. It's a compelling story. Uh, why, why don't you say the name of this person? Sure, sure. Um, the name of the person. Uh, is it's a biography, autobiography. His name is Oloda Okwano, and he talks about you know just his journey from being uh, captured as a slave from Nigeria uh, at, the, at the very early age of ten. Then uh, subsequent years, you know, he struggled to find his freedom. You know, of course, you know, this was 1789, right? But uh, over time, in a way, he gained his independence, yeah. which, I mean, I haven't read the book. I'll be yeah. <laughs> clear. But we read the back. We read the back. <laughs> we read the back. But, you know, the whole point is that, you know, there was, um, he has two stories. So, like, the mm. early stage was like, you know, he was stuck in this system, as we all know. Well, captured at the age of 10. 10, exactly. And, and so he's not yet... Um, you know his his formative years, his yes, teen years were were, exactly. were spent in slavery, working on slavery ships, and yes. somehow saved money yes. and bought his own freedom. Exactly. exactly, that's incredible. Exactly. And then and then, do you know what business he went into? I don't know, and I, I wish I could just skim through it to figure it yeah. out. But I know he was in London for a couple of years, and he 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 was in Europe. That's why yeah. because in America yeah. that time was not uh, not a great place to yeah, <laughs> start a business start, for a black person. Start for yeah. business for a black person, but I <laughs> yeah. think. Um, uh, I think this maybe in the next episode so when we're together yeah. to probably have read it more in depth but I, I, I think I just heard it from my talk and I think the person who was talking about this book showed two pictures and there was one picture of him as a teen like just stripped down mm. you know with no clothes mm, mm. look mutilated and just um, dehumanized dehumanized yeah. and they showed the picture of both the one here yeah look at him dressed up as yeah. a european aristocrat with a uh, if you're if you're listening to this and you can't see the image it's a a picture he looks like he has excellent posture very yes. confident he exactly. looks like an investor yes he looks like and he's investor. got the white uh, furly uh, uh, whatever that thing is called yeah, on the shirt yeah. around the neck exactly uh, and it's a little bit of uh, frederick Douglass is how he's yeah, coming. Yeah, a little yeah, bit I of his story uh, both well yes. we say that uh, because it, that's what the back of the book says that that is his story is evocative yes. of, of frederick Douglass. Yes. that's the closest comparable that that might people might know yes. and he also but he does also if you again if you're watching if you're listening to this and not seeing mm-hmm. it his his this portrait really radiates the same energy yes of a confident person yes and i think from the talk right what he was saying is that your life you can change your life mm. i mean he said it, this was worst right he didn't mm. he didn't have a choice mm. to change his life right because he was captive right he was a slave mm. but he said uh, what the talk was saying was that um where you are now doesn't necessarily define where you have to be mm. the next 10, 20, 30 years. Like yes. you, have the, you have the capacity to change your life. Yes. Um, and sometimes it's not like you need something else. You can literally make up your mind. It's a mindset. Like you can make up, I mean, I know there are many talks like that where people say change your mind. But I, you mm. know, I felt like this was grounded in a story yep. that had some, some essence to it. Oh, yeah. right? Like and and, and yeah. this is a little bit like, this extreme, right? From slavery to yeah. this person, and yeah. maybe many people didn't have that transition. But yeah. I think the the moral of the story was like, you don't have to be stuck to where you are. Mm-hmm. You can literally mm-hmm. make you where you end. You no, know, this is what they think about him when he as a as a legacy, mm-hmm. not as a slave, right? And I think that was kind of the. That's the message of, yes. of the book and, and of the presentation that you heard. Yes. And again, for the people that are listening, uh, are there show notes? Do you write some, uh, for things that are difficult to to spell, will yes. you write it I'll for write people it. who are listening? I'll write that well, somewhere. maybe we'll spell the last name yes. for your listeners. Yep. Uh, E-Q-U-I-A-N-O. 
sorry, Aquino? Aquino. Aquino. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, if, you, if you Google that name, yes. this looks like an amazing story and so very appropriate both for your podcast yes. and for my YouTube channel. We are yeah. recording simultaneously. Yeah, this is so cool. Like, it's, it's, it's double. It's very cool. It's really cool. So, so let's, let's uh, if people have been listening patiently so far, here, here so far we've talked about this amazing autobiography. Yes. Uh, and we should define the goals for, for why we're meeting up. We, we have so we have a few goals. There's a few reasons yes. that we're talking tonight. Yes, exactly. So what can people expect? What, what was your mission? What was your goal in inviting me on? So I think one was that, um, I mean, just um, I, I followed some of your work on, on Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, prior to that, prior to that, I met you in 2019. I think 2019 or 20. Was it 2019? I don't remember. <laughs> It's coming back to me after we met outside. Yeah. It was if anybody. Well, obviously this wasn't. It wasn't recorded, so you guys did not hear or see this. Yeah. But uh, but it was weird. It, uh, it it you seemed suddenly very familiar. Yeah. So we definitely have, have have exchanged words. I don't remember when though. Yes, 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 yes. And I and I, I mean, yeah. Robson community is pretty small, so I guess. So basically, you followed my work on social media. Yes, and, you follow your work, and yeah. I think. There was a lot of uh, thanks for bringing back to the topic, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I think there were many. Um, I saw a lot of what I wanted to do, and you were living it. Okay, you're living a life I wanted to live. Wow, that is yeah, you know. So I, I especially the video when on the motorcycle, Boda Boda, <laughs> right? There was this sense of freedom, but also like uh, this. I think this guy was building like an energy plant or something like that, right? That yeah, was, yeah. Johnny in Northern Malawi, if you're watching or listening yes. to this, uh, cheers yeah. and ch cheers to everybody who who made that possible. Yes, cheers from Brookline, Massachusetts. Yeah, che cheers from everyone who yeah. helped you build that because I think that was it was it, like it brought me into a space where I was, I was like, that is, um, you are there, you're mm -hmm. doing something that I I feel like I have to be doing you know um and so that was very compelling i think the other piece was just that um there was some element of um i think anytime i talk to you it's always like um there's no sense of like reservation i mean in a very good way but it's like as some it's like you have to just do it uh, there's a sense of doing and it, it portrays in your in how you talk how you do things but also how you and i think that's what that's the life worth living you know, in a way, and and that was very compelling to me. It was very inspiring to me. Um, and I think for the conversation we're going to talk about today, mm -hmm. yeah, I think it encompasses most of the things that we'll share. Like, you know, you're enough, but also um, and something. So I think that was really powerful. Um, just from, you know, watching. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you. You have no idea how much it means. Because yeah. I'll confess something for both your listeners and for my watchers. Uh, yeah. You have no idea... Uh, and I, I think this is actually useful for people to hear yep. Yep. because you were saying all this stuff earlier and mm -hmm. I was thinking, damn, if only he knew <laughs> uh, how insecure uh, I am, how many negative emotions mm -hmm. there are involved of, of, oh, I didn't do that right. Mm -hmm. Oh, I should be ashamed. I'm not enough. I, yeah. oh my God, I'm totally uh, delayed. Oh, they think I'm crazy. Mm -hmm. And so when somebody uh, says something nice, you have no idea how much it means to somebody who creates yeah. stuff, the, the validation. Yeah. And I, and I, I want to share that. There's, there's a purpose for my sharing that, which is that I think um, surely people who create new businesses mm -hmm. and, and your, your podcast is, yes. is yes. that's the target audience. Yes. Yeah. If, if you ever have dark moments of doubt, uh, you're not alone. Exactly. I was catching up with one of the people in my book from mm -hmm. Madagascar mm -hmm. and she said, um, I don't think she would mind me sharing this because mm -hmm. some things she said I could share. Just how difficult mm -hmm. emotionally, physically, mentally, mm -hmm. uh, the pandemic uh, mm -hmm. and the crisis it brought. Mm -hmm. um, things are going better now. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. uh, if you have had dark moments of doubt or people have, you know, you think people are thinking negative things about you. And, hey, maybe sometimes they are. Mm -hmm. Uh, keep going because yeah. uh, eventually you'll hear something yeah, nice yes. like what you've told me and yes. it'll it'll totally make your day and uh, so yeah. I want to share that and my goal in being here with you is first of all I loved your podcast there are a few quotes I wanted to ask you about because I, I disagreed yeah. with them so <laughs> if, if you think that podcasts are just about people saying yeah 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 man you're right no 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 this is going to be the podcast or the the episode on the channel where <laughs> we say no I disagree with that quote and we're going to find out why actually we end up agreeing exactly. on it uh, eventually but um, so I wanted to ask you about these quotes from one of your recent podcast interviews yep. and uh, also um, 
there's there's an ulterior motive that we both have, yes. which is that we're both uh, imagining yes. taking time off in the fall and the spring. Yes. Fall 2022, yes. spring 2023. Yes. And we both coincidentally fingers had crossed. the same, yeah. fingers crossed, yeah, we had the same vision that maybe we're going to hit the road, yeah. uh, be almost, almost. Uh, pretty much nomadic <laughs> and homeless, some would say. Others people would say nomadic. <laughs> and uh, we were both thinking of, of checking off uh, and checking out visiting, investing some time uh, in both Asia yes. in the fall the and fall then uh, Africa in the spring. Yeah. And um, yeah, so that's another another thing that's going on this evening yes. as we're talking about yes. how, to, how the heck to do it. And uh, it's record that here so we can look back and say, yeah. did that happen? <laughs> did we really say that? Yeah, did we yeah. really think we could do that? Yes. Oh my God, we were so silly. <laughs> so that's, that's one thing that we might be saying in about a year or a year and a half, or we might say, oh wow, we underestimated this yes. or... Exactly. So, uh, welcome to our own um, story within a story. Exactly. exactly. Should, should I ask you about these Please, now? please go ahead. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, um, this is the one that stuck in my mind. Yeah. Uh, the founder, she's the founder, right? Um, so, this actually, this... Um, in your last episode. Yes. Right. The, 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 so, the synthesis of this, I'll, I'll just give, so I have yeah. uh, my colleague, uh, a good brother and a friend, uh, Efusa Ojumu. He works at the Clayton Christensen Institute. Um that's where um, you work also. Yeah, right. that's where I work now. And he uh, he wrote a book with the, the former prof, uh, uh, Harvard uh, Business School professor Clay, Clayton Christensen. Okay. Um, and he came up, he, he's a founder of the disruptive innovation term, disruptive innovation. Okay. And um, he has come up with several theories, but this is the one he's well known for. Um, and uh, throughout his work, he has, you know, you know consulted companies. Actually, he's, I think... His book was one of the books that Steve Jobs read. That's mm -hmm. one of the books that Steve Jobs always looked up to. Mm -hmm. But he, over time, and he, when he taught people and he consulted people, because he was also a professor at Harvard Business School, mm -hmm. he said one thing he realized was when we think of emerging markets or what we call good markets at the Institute, what really um, stands out is um, um, if you really want to create significant long-term inclusive prosperity, you have to think of your company as a building a system. Building a system. And, and, not, a, um, and not a product because... Mm. Oh, but is, wait, I, I, did I even, did I, did I say the quote? Yeah, yeah, did I say it on the recording? Yeah. I didn't just, I was reading it, but I wasn't sure I said it before you started. It. The, it, it was, it, this was the quote that you, that came out during your interview of the person who runs the African Diaspora Network. Network yes. And and you, or was it she? She, yeah. Uh, said the quote, mm -hmm. um, it's not about the product, it's about the process. Yes, yes. And, and the reason I wanted to push, you, push back on that and hear your explanation of why it actually makes sense yep. is uh, surely if your product or service doesn't deliver what a client wants, mm -hmm. that's the end of your business. Yes, yes. And so that's crazy. If Tesla had just focused on oh, how we build something, or Steve Jobs had focused on how we build something, mm -hmm. as opposed to does the car or does the phone work and delight yeah. your customer, exactly. surely Apple and Tesla would be considered much less yep. than they are. So, so why don't you explain actually why it is about the process and yes. not the product. That's the, that's, that's, so that's, so yeah. thanks for the context that it's, it's Clayton Christensen's yeah. quote. Yes. Okay. And now why does that make sense? It stems from Clayton Christensen. So, yeah. I mean, the quote has evolved and it feels like mm -hmm. it says that in some of the workshops organized, I think so, so for this, um, and so in context of businesses, right, uh, in developed markets like the United States and, you know, UK, France, Germany, um, the, the the premise of process is that um, if you don't really figure out um, the process provides some level of of sustainability that um, and I'll give this example so mm -hmm. when we think of the iPhone right we mm -hmm. think this is the innovation right? yes yes but what stemmed from the innovation and created the iPhone was set of processes at the back end mm -hmm. that brought together you know designers it brought together engineers mm -hmm. who came together and thought about how can we create a a, 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 um, a phone yeah. that um will be as clean and neat like this right mm -hmm. if you take you know if you think about it the other companies that can make a smartphone mm -hmm. right and maybe they can mimic uh, a similar model of the apple mm -hmm. but you always have um 
but you can always tell that this is an Apple product, even though like a, another company can make a similar model and everything. Mm-hmm. And I think Apple makes the Apple phone really good because behind the phone is the process that was set up mm-hmm. such that they understand what it takes to build a very good iPhone, right? And I think, um, and what with something that was said is just like what happens when you create an innovation mm-hmm. and you make the innovation consistently good or you can say this is from this company is that they have put in systems in place or processes in place rather mm-hmm. that they can always replicate the process, mm-hmm. right? Because you can always have one off. I mean, it's similar to, I know, go this way. There's some, there's some instances where like, even when students do well in class mm-hmm. and you ha- give an exam, a student, a, a student who is average or maybe not so good might mm-hmm. pass an exam one time, like mm-hmm. really well, mm-hmm. 90%. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. if you want to really know someone is a good student, you have to look through like four years. Uh, or a long period of time. We want to see if they can repeat the success so, exactly. with multiple different professors, exactly. multiple different classmates, exactly. subject matters. Exactly. Okay. Right. But what makes them good was that behind the behind that performance, there must have been a set of behaviors, behaviors, a set of habits. Exactly. Interesting. I've never. Th- you know what? You're suddenly restoring some some of my faith in higher education. I was beginning to know. I, 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 I'm sure your listeners and our watchers have yeah. have seen the same thing that higher education could be in crisis. Yes. People are questioning the value of it. Exactly. But now that you put it that way, yeah, it, it is uh, your diploma, and mm-hmm. if you've distinguished yourself in getting your diploma, it's a yes. sign that you have. If you screwed up, it wasn't a repeated pattern of screwing up. (laughs) That you eventually learned how to work with other people and deliver on a certain set of, well, expectations. Exactly. However however much they sometimes don't make sense to everybody, you figured out the rules of the game and played them. Exactly, exactly. Um, Exactly. You know, that's interesting. The, The way that you explained the quote to me actually yesterday or two days ago. Yes, yes. Uh, um, I also want to share, if yes, that's all right, yes, because yes, because it resonated even more with me. Yes, uh, I got hung up on the product, yes. and I and that's the reason I pushed back. No, 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 come on, look at the iPhone, look at a Tesla Model Three, yes. and tell me that it's not about the product. That's yes. the reason that everybody yes. loves yes. these companies. Yes, yes. And then I, rem- I, I, but something about the way you explained it to me, yes, uh, it clicked that. Oh, yeah, but that's not what they started out with. Yes, exactly. SpaceX, uh, to use that example. Yes. Separate, but similar. Uh, There were, what, two dramatic, colossal failures. Exactly. And the third launch, if it had failed, that would have been the end. Exactly. And if we had gotten caught up on those first two products, then nobody would be excited. That company would be dead. But there was a process behind it of figuring out why did that crash, why did that fail. Exactly. So it really was about the process and not the product. Exactly. The iteration. Exactly, and I, I think I think when I talked to you uh, a couple of was it yesterday? <laughs> it was yesterday or two day, or two days ago. <laughs> yeah, like Groundhog. But we're, like we're both doing a lot of things. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But I, th- I think yeah, because I, I, you made a very interesting point. And I think that's a very clear example too. Because I think um, even just to um, kind of just double down on that is if you even look at individuals, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, you see patterns. And sometimes they may, like, there are some people that, um, you know, you can tell, like, even based on how the patterns have been, mm-hmm. you expect, like, because, I mean, you have the data. I mean, people get older, you have data. But you can, sometimes mm-hmm. you can tell, like, okay, this person will make it because from the last experience, the person succeeded. Um, succeeded. But, but even though the person might have a hiccup, you know yeah. that that person's process yeah. is such a way that, I mean, either the person vets things well, or the person understands how to figure out the arbitrage of something. Mm-hmm. But you can tell, like, even for human beings, we mm-hmm. can tell, like, based on, we, we might not call it process, but based on the person's thought process, mm-hmm. the person makes decisions that, in the long run, if yeah. you do, like, a, a, mm-hmm. a, a um, an integral yeah. of the person's life, you can be like, yeah. okay, yeah. the person had things that... It's like watching a, a great sports team, yes, to, or or a great musician, exactly, um, stumble yes. and fail. A great figure skater, they're always yes. falling. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. and we all cringe. We're like, oh, exactly. but um, but yes, the, the 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 great ones are the ones that uh, they bounce back. Exactly. Somehow. Yeah, system. Kobe Bryant and I watch basketball. Mm. Kobe Bryant always said, you know, he worked harder after championships than even when he didn't win. 
because he yeah. understood that um, yeah the failure yes. makes you work harder yes exactly yeah. so I, I think uh, Kobe LeBron if you think of all of these very successful athletes uh, yeah. Tom Brady I, that's the one I was thinking yeah. I, I remember when when they lost Super Bowls yes. you could see the disbelief in the eyes yes and uh, at the same time you knew that there was a resolve exactly exactly <laughs> oh mean, oh no we, we're not this is it's going to be different next time exactly exactly <laughs> no definitely and I think that's that's kind of how I think about it Tom Brady's not just a good athlete yeah. it's a good athlete that has a good process yeah that I'm not, he, I know he's very talented too, so yeah. we should not discount that. But like, he has put systems in place where it's almost certain that yeah. you know the performance will be replicated, like can be replicated for 10, yeah. 10 plus years now. Yeah. So yeah. I think that's kind of where. So we, we so we mastered the first quote, and I stand corrected. And thank you for my, <laughs> for the correction, and thank you for educating me. Uh, so if you're listening or watching, to repeat, uh, it is about the process and not the product. Yes. Um, it is about the behaviors, the patterns. Yes. Yep. That allow somebody uh, or an organization. Yes. Uh, to bounce back. Exactly. When an iteration mm -hmm. is not perfect. Exactly. Exactly. All right. Checking that exactly. one off. <laughs> How much time do we have before uh, your commitment? No, we can, <gasps> go, we can go ahead. We can oh, go ahead. No, no, no. But let's let's wrap up quickly because yes. uh, you had something that started a few minutes no, ago. Uh, you are enough. Yes. Heck no. <laughs> I don't feel I'm enough. I always feel like I'm failing, like I'm inadequate. Oh, maybe it was my upbringing. Maybe, maybe, uh, who knows? Yeah. Uh, or maybe, you know, you never know where, where, where we learn these self-talk narratives. Yes. Whether the, the, the first thoughts you think in the morning, like, <gasps> yeah. <laughs> oh my God, oh my God, I should be doing this. Uh, so we could, you know, you can, you can hire a therapist if you want to yeah. dig in the dirt and find out where it happened. But we all need therapies. By yeah. Way. You think? Yeah, I think so. I think. It's Why do you important. say that? Because I think, um, um, have you tried it? I mean, I I have uh, I mean I have a sister who is a psychiatrist. Okay. So I have that benefit. Of yeah. See, my, my dad was a psychiatrist. <laughs> Maybe that's the way I am. The way I am. <laughs> People have speculated. Also, I, I tried therapy. You know, since I asked you, I feel mm. like your listeners will think yeah. I'm a jerk if I don't answer mm. my own question. Yes. I've tried it and I lost patience because mm. uh, I just don't think that you can truly, honestly, ever tell mm. uh, the totality of your story. Yeah. I mm. think that. You know, look, I, I, at this point, I'm almost a storyteller as my side hustle, yes. <laughs> my book, and yes. now this channel, and, and yeah. what I hope to do this year. Mm -hmm. But uh, the truth of telling a story, maybe we tell other people's stories more honestly than we yes. can tell our own story. Yes. I'm looking at, that's one of the reasons I'm looking yes. for the autobiography you introduced yes. me to, yes. is to see how uh, Aluada Aquino, Aquino, how, how he tells his own story. Yes. Uh, but anyways, but I have two, resp quick two, two responses. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think yeah. the first one is you that want um, you want, you can learn, we can hopefully learn more about ourselves through them as we tell the stories. We learn more about ourselves. Oh. We can, we can, it's just a possibility. And the second thing is that, wait for it. Okay. Um, it's a process. <laughs> <laughs> it might take decades it might take the like you, like the 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 you are enough is uh -huh. a process okay yeah you are enough is a process because yeah. um some people take you know lifetime some is okay because i think it's not it's not something you have to figure out tomorrow um and i think it's true people in experience like interacting with people getting yourself out of your comfort zone mm -hmm. and pushing you to the you know, extreme entrepreneurship <laughs> you know i mean but yeah seriously i think that's how you you get to learn you, just, you start learning about like this that's you enough I, I think and i think the, the the term sounds like um it's, it's a quantifiable thing mm. but i think it's more than that you know so mm. but I, I can i can so you are enough yeah but don't you think don't you think a little bit of dissatisfaction with who we are yes uh, with with people around us, actually, yes, yes, are how we drive ourselves and others to improve. Yes. If we were happy and complacent, mm -hmm. you know, arguably, actually, maybe we'd be happier, yes. and maybe we would have caused less ecological destruction and less yes. destruction of, of fellow human beings through yes. slavery and exploitative capitalism and yes. exploitative socialism, whatever, yes, exactly. or, or Soviet communism, yes. I should say, because <laughs> I, I don't. Never mind. Maybe we could get into how can and capitalism and some. Some That's social right. justice be balanced in a way that, uh, but we're, we're going to step away from that topic. Yes. My point is this, mm -hmm. maybe complacency would have meant for happiness and less destruction of each other and the environment, yeah. but 
to do a lot of the things that apparently humans aspire to do, which yep. is to have energy, health care, education, mm -hmm. the ability to, to wander and experience. Yes. Um, it involves some dissatisfaction. Yes. It involves the instinct to leave your home village. It yes. involves the instinct that, no, it's not enough to, to cook with charcoal mm -hmm. or to read by candlelight. Yes, yes. So, how, so you are enough. Mm -hmm. We are enough. We have enough. Yes. I know it's provocative and some people are going to yell and scream at me and want to turn off the podcast, but is dissatisfaction and a little bit of greed yes. actually what drive progress to be yeah. a little bit I think provocative? Being, being enough also suffices that you are aware of all the different faculties that you possess as a human being. I think all the different emotions and reactions that we experience mm. um, actually come to its full I'll say potential once we understand who, like, that we can be, um, we can actually act. Because I think when you start act, when you, you when you begin to act, when mm -hmm. you provide action to things that you believe is what you have to do, or perhaps you are being informed. I mean, there's information at the internal, externally. But I think once you fully, action is synonymous to, like, figuring out your capabilities and i think all those different emotions and reactions or you know human behaviors comes to full strength once we get out there and do stuff okay right so i think it, it doesn't I, I truly believe that if you don't act well to a, if you don't do something it doesn't matter the degree of it but if you don't start doing things you'll not really understand you will not come to the position where you fully fully know that you are enough Okay, because so, I, so I think action is synonymous with that, but it also drives you. You start figuring out all the different aspects of yourself that will make you to conclusively believe that you are enough. Because if you don't act, I don't think you'll figure out that full potential. So you are enough is not an invitation to complacency. Exactly, Ex perfectly. You said it perfectly. Okay, okay. Because thank you. you might have a subconscious. You might yeah. think. I think it's a false narrative if you don't yeah. act and yeah. you think you're enough. You have yeah. not really thought. You are enough does, is not an invitation to complacency. Exactly. Uh, and, uh, and, I, and the other codicil is that you are, you are enough, we are enough, what we have is enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some things maybe we should embrace. I think it's really context dependent. Yes. If we're talking about stuff, mm -hmm. most of us have enough stuff. You don't yes. need that much stuff. Yes. But some dissatisfaction with ignorance, yep. hatred. Yep. Uh, a fellow human being suffering yep. that kind of frustration no we're not satisfied that's a good kind of yeah, sense yes. of inadequacy or you see your your colleagues not not pulling their weight or not trying that kind of dissatisfaction saying hey yeah. you're not doing enough yeah. ah you, you get the point i get the point yes. you're not doing enough is separate so from you are not, not enough. enough exactly oh Man, you keep educating me. It's like a, a the student has become the teacher. It's a <laughs> yeah, because I mean, the insecurity comes. Um, I mean, this. I think there's always some degree of insecurity, which is yeah. okay, right? Yeah. But Natural. I think yeah. like true deep insecurity is like knowing that you're not, you're not enough. Yeah. Uh, but it's like, um, as again, it's a process. But at the end of the day, it's like once you start seeing that you're an action of change. Mm. I mean, it doesn't have to be just entrepreneurship. But I think in the whole context of like. Um, you can actually be more effective when mm. you know you're enough. Yeah. You know, but I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. Oh, my God. Yeah, <laughs> because um, the last few days, there, there are these moments of doubt. And there's these moments of, mm -hmm. oh, man, I suck. I, yes. not, I, I, I can't do this. Yes. And, and that's when you, you, you lose the momentum and you, you fall a little bit off course. Yes. And, yeah, no, we need, yes. to, we need to wrap this up yeah. for you. But uh, <laughs> no, and the last so quote that so we agreed that we wanted to cover is, do you have stories of failure? Are stories of failure valuable this is a question that both yeah. that, that i got about my last book it is a question i got this morning from the general counsel of oxfam are you going to include stories of failure in your next book yeah. what what is your you you had an answer to this when we pregame this yeah, a little so bit for sure for sure are, are you going to feature stories of failure on your podcast and are they valuable so yeah i think for the last four episodes now i've interviewed so if you uh, if you've been consistently watching the last four episodes i interviewed uh, sister jane Sister Jane. I don't, I don't to, I, I'm now forgetting all the names. I know. I we, it, amazing it, entrepreneurs. Yeah. If anyone's listening carefully, they'll notice that we skipped over the name of the person yes. who runs Africa Diaspora Network. Yes. And I'm so embarrassed. I'm so bad with names. If I you're know. listening or watching this, we yes. apologize to you. Oh, you have it on your screen. Yes. Good. So I think. Let's I read think it uh, to, think just to make sure um, she feels honored. Yeah. Hyacinta Toyoko. That's the first entrepreneur. Okay. And Jamalia, Sister Rose, and Sister yeah. Jane. Those were the first four entrepreneurs I interviewed. Okay. Then. The lady that did the intro was Deborah, Deborah Passio. 
Deborah Pasio. Uh, yes. That's her name. Yes. All right, Deborah, yes. if you're listening, we both yes. apologize. Yes, Deborah Pasio. Uh, yes. But she's from Asia. Um, and she's from yeah. Asia, but she leads the. Do you remember how to spell Pasio? P A C I O. Okay, that's what I thought, that's but I, I didn't yeah. want to get it wrong. No, for sure, for sure. <laughs> right. but, um, I, I think uh, the, the, this past four entrepreneurs, what I've um, discovered was that uh, the failure was uh, just lesson points. Was, uh, they were, were just lessons. Less, lessons learned. Lessons learned, that's yes. right. It, it was just, that was the simple interpretation, just like the flip, of the like was the opposite of the same coin. Like They used that to build, uh, to understand what they were good at, what they were... Hmm. Like actually knowing that this door is not worth moving into it um, at that point in time, X. Yes. At the same time, they also understood clearly how, um, um, like what what it takes to actually uh, move from point A to B mm-hmm. based on what they have. Because I think for all these entrepreneurs, and mm-hmm. most of our talk is like they know how to to be very scrappy mm-hmm. and know how to use like optimize like literally. They know how to maximize very little resources mm-hmm. to get the highest return. Yeah, and I think what failure teaches is like you, you. It's like it always brings you back to the point. Like, what can I really do that can optimize myself yeah. and yeah. get the best out of it? And I don't think anything else teaches you more than failure. Failure you know? is the best teacher. Yes, and it gives you that. It gives the opportunity to know like these are the things I need and this is what I need. Yeah. Right. And, and and for those, if you can go back to the past four episodes, mm. uh, you can tell like they actually mentioned some of these things they started. Yeah. So I think the uh, the second uh, Jamila, she talked about um, one time she started something and she was always thinking about it didn't go so well and she was mm. thinking about going back to her for, because she quit uh, like a good really high paying job mm-hmm. and her mom was like Man, why did you quit that job yeah, yeah. and. She remembers she started it and it was not going so well. And she was always thinking about calling the job and like, can I come back? And so like, she always had that, you know, it was always back and forth. Yeah. And she was like, oh, this thing is not going as well as I thought, you know. And at one point she actually had to, and she got pregnant at one point, so she had to like close it down mm-hmm. and she had to focus on her personal life and the kid. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. it was just like, and it was considered like then, like you just you screwed up the idea because still this company got a good job, mm. you know. And you just like she was like that. That really made her to like mm-hmm. actually motivate her. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna figure this out. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna figure out how this will work. And it just and now she's now she's very versatile. I think she runs like three companies now. Mm-hmm. She mm-hmm. does like a bag manufacturing company. She does like a, a, a consulting company. Mm-hmm. So she can multitask. She just she has learned how to navigate complexity because. With that pregnancy and stuff, she had to figure out how to make money, how to take out the baby, mm-hmm. and all that, but also how to like manage the small money that she had. Yeah. So I think like those things really help get the best out of you. Makes you believe that you know you can actually make things happen with very limited resources. So there you go. If anybody wants a recap, yes, we've discussed a lot of things, mm-hmm. but the three quotes that we wanted yes. to discuss and chew over and hopefully digest and provide you never mind but that analogy breaks down that <laughs> metaphor is very bad <laughs> uh, we wanted so we wanted to 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 discuss is about the process yes. not the product uh, we wanted to discuss you are enough that it's not an invitation to complacency but you are enough it's about the actions that you're taking that might exactly. be enough or or not the right ones or not nuanced the right way um, and then finally uh, yeah stories of failure are valuable. They're studying valuable. the failures of others, studying our own failures. Yes. Uh, what I used to tell students when we uh, reviewed tests is um, the the greatest danger seemed to be that they would skip over yes. studying their own failure, but they'd also skip over studying their own successes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Because you succeed, and you're like, oh, okay, I know how to do that. No, 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 no. no. Yes. It's sometimes good to go back and rewind, and what, what, do, what do we do right? Yeah. What do we do wrong? And, and don't skip over, well, that turned out well, so we know what we're doing. Yes. So I'd study both the successes and the failures. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I mean, I just think, uh, I mean, and just the, the two things that came to mind for us to if can wrap up. So yep. there's actually this um, very uh, prominent uh, South African venture capitalist, but he's also like a, a, sp- a speaker, so he talks he talks too much, but in a good way. <laughs> in a good way. But he says something that he actually shared a point that said what makes, uh, what makes you become a, a, a man or woman is that you're able to tell, you're able to navigate failure and success. You, you're able to treat failure and success equally and wow. remain the same. 
There's so there's uh, you know what I'm saying? Yes, there's a there is a poem. Yes, and it's by somebody who is very. God, this is this is a tough one because yes. it's a profound, fantastic poem, yes. but written by somebody mm-hmm. who also might have had, um, for his time, mm-hmm. a very typical British attitude <laughs> for people that were not of European descent. Mm-hmm. So he's a controversial person to <laughs> cite, but there were some things he wrote mm-hmm. that uh, can stand the test of time, uh, yes. even if attitudes uh, on some issues have mm-hmm. evolved. Yep. And is, yeah, I believe the poem is If by mm-hmm. Royard Kipling. Yes. And again, uh, apologies if you uh, f- can't stand the man because of some other yeah. thoughts or things that he might have written or said. But mm-hmm. if, if you can, uh, I think it's if you can tolerate yes. both success and failure. Yeah, yes. And not, basically not lose your cool. Cool, yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> to, to update the language yes, slightly. Exactly. And I think that because, I mean, he's kind of what I was saying is like, I mean, learn from them, but it should not be like, um, it shouldn't define you. Yeah. But I mean, just going back to the premise of our conversations, like, they, they were, there is some element of like, the, the external failure doesn't necessarily conform to the fact that you can't do stuff, you can't yeah. build stuff and stuff like that, but you yeah. have to use them as a very good point. Yeah, I'm, I'm so glad that we we fleshed out and explained these quotes. You are enough and, and what it means. It's a... Uh, something to, to, to keep going when things don't go well, when you have those stories of failure, to realize, hey, it's about the process, it's about the journey. You are enough. Just modify your actions next time. Exactly. exactly. And on that note, dear listeners, dear watchers, if you're still with us, thank you for staying with us. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thanks, Professor, for being here. Jacob. Yes. Thank happy. you. Yes. It is awesome <laughs> to see you after a few yes. years. Yes. Uh, we survived the pandemic, and now we're on yes. to a next exciting chapter over the rest of this year and, and uh, beginning of next year. And uh, we invite you guys to follow along with us and, and see what happens. Yes. See whether we're, we're, first of all, whether we end up working together, because we still don't know if we're going to be doing, you know, stuff during the fall and the spring together, but there's a chance of it. And uh, so thank you again. It's an honor to be on your podcast. I I loved your interviews. And if if you haven't heard them, guys, you should go to Jacob's uh, podcast. What's it called again? Uh, Doers Within Us. Doers Within Us. Doers Doers Within Us. So that's more for... Within Us. Doers. Yeah, doer. Doers. Yeah, within. Yeah, within us. Yeah, (laughs) doers, as opposed to... Not doers, no, not as doers. opposed to not doing, right? <laughs> so hopefully uh, that's more for people watching my channel. And my channel is Extreme Entrepreneurship on YouTube. It's a brand new channel, so please don't judge me by the low uh, the low watch counts, which are spirit crushing for a new YouTuber. <laughs> it's, it's a process. <laughs> exactly, it's like, exactly. subscribe. Subscribe to the Yeah. Subscribe, subscribe like, comment, Please. share. Yes. Make uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Anyways, enough, wait, enough wait, wait. Uh, plugging our own channels. Except, what, no, that's what, what you're, that's what you're supposed to do. do. You have to do it. Yeah. Please, please subscribe. Please. If you haven't clicked the button, just, yeah. okay, I'll wait but, for you. But it's 20, so, we're okay. going to wait for click them to the do button. it. Subscribe. Yes. Have you done it yet? Yes. Oh, I like that. I like that. Look at you interacting with our viewers like that. You have to subscribe. You're gonna yeah, miss come on. Out. If you're still watching and you haven't subscribed, you man, have come to. on, show some love. At least just like. It's yeah, love. come on. This like isn't it. the worst thing you've ever <laughs> seen, right? Come on. People are definitely gonna subscribe because of this. Yeah, because of this. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what else do you want us to do? I feel. I feel like this is a public radio pledge drive. Why haven't you donated <laughs> money? This is the seventh <laughs> day. Why haven't you given? <laughs> Just subscribe no, already. With all seriousness, yeah. subscribe. Yeah. Okay. You'll make our day. You okay. really, you, you'll send love to us and we will send it back to you in the form of fantastic, entertaining videos with deep, profound insights yes. and uh, with wisdom. Abundance. abundance and love. Yeah. Some yeah. caution. It, so and, and some silliness. <laughs> it might not always be wisdom you get from us, but you might learn what not to do, <laughs> what not to say. You might learn wisdom from the people we talk to. That's what I've learned. I think you're right. I think you're right. I think yes. the process of interviewing, we learn, yes. we understand ourselves better. Maybe. Yeah, and, and we have fun. Yeah, the most of our things are fun. That's, that's absolutely, absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you guys. Yes. Take care. All right. See you on yes. the see you on the next video or the, yes, next, the next podcast. Video, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Take care, everyone. See you. Bye. Bye.